right. Good morning, Open Wells, and good morning, Great Grace. We're glad you're here this morning. Uh, we've got folks pulling up in the parking lot right now that are going to be watching in for, uh, for drive-in church this morning. Our worship team is here, and uh, we're going to have a special morning. Um, the Lord's already been moving. Uh, Dennis has shared some things on Facebook. The Lord's been speaking to him and already done uh, in him this morning, and I know we're just going to have an amazing time. Um, every time we've gathered, there's been such a sense of the presence of God such a sense of the word of the Lord and, and just the anointing on it. And so as we gather this morning, as folks are pulling in the parking lot, we have speakers going out in the parking lot. People are watching on their mobile devices. Uh, even if you're at home this morning, uh, you can watch this morning. We do invite you to come to the church. We believe there's something powerful about that. But Lord, we just, we commit this morning to you. We say, Lord, this is your morning. Touch our hearts. Move on our lives this morning. Lord, I pray for powerful Holy Spirit encounters to flow, Lord, even over the live stream this morning, right out into the parking lot today. And we bless you, Lord. We love you today. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's worship together this morning. Our hearts are set on you, Lord, as we seek your holy face. Just as we come to this place in the morning. Just set your heart, set your affection, set your gaze on Him. We're seated in heavenly places. Come on, let's surround the throne of grace this morning. Let's come to Him. Let's come to worship. Let's come to seek Him. Let's come to listen to His voice this morning. Come on, let's come to gather. Let's come to gather in spirit before Him. To proclaim our love for Him. To proclaim our love for Him. To proclaim He's holy. To proclaim He's holy. To proclaim He is lifted up in this hour. Oh God. Our hearts are set on you, Lord, as we seek your holy face. Crying out for you, Lord, for heaven in this place. We are crying. Come on, Holy Spirit. Let's play. 
just ask him, feel this place. Feel this place, feel this place. say it, Lord, that you are our desire, Father God. You're the one that we want, oh God. You're the one that we need, Lord. You are my desire, the strength of my soul. You are what I want more than
thirsty for you, Father God. You know, it's easy to get completely caught up with what's going on right now. But we need to remind ourselves we're caught up in Jesus. He's your shield, he's your protection. Pursue his face right now. Pursue his face right now. For those who have gotten caught up in fear, I want you to remember that you rely daily on the grace of God and that your times are in his hands. Daily, 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 you rely on his grace for provision, for everything that you need. Amen. But there's this hunger that goes off inside of us that says, God, I must know you. I must know you more. It's just not enough to hear about the most awesome stories. That's wonderful and we love it. But God, we've got to taste it. We've got to experience it. Lord, there's something that's a short scripture in the Bible, but it's everything. It says, and Enoch walked intimately, daily with you, Father God. We want that intimacy. We want that closeness. We want it to be said of us before your throne, that we are called your friends, God. So I remind you this morning to get out of the camp of fear. Get out of the camp of apathy and get back into faith. Get back into that place of the pursuit of his presence, the pursuit of his face. This says, I want to walk with you. I want to know you. I want to experience you, Father. I want the burning bush of you to burn before me, oh God. That we might walk in your ways. That we might walk in the calling of you while we're here on earth. Amen. So every word that you speak, you're pulling me through the door to the place where I can meet with you face to face with you, Lord. For it's not enough what others have told me yet. What I've read those beautiful stories, I must know you. I must know you, Lord.
vehicles and, and at your home, wherever you're at right now, if you're watching on a mobile device, that you're experiencing what we feel in here right now, the sense of God's presence and the, there's like a closeness of God in here right now. And Lord, we just respond to that right now. Our hearts draw near in this moment. And Lord, we thank you that you promise that if we draw near, that you'll draw near. And we sense it in this very place today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, again, we, we just welcome you this morning. We know many folks are uh, already pulled up in the parking lot for drive-in church this morning. And uh, we know many are watching online. I've been kind of uh, watching it on my device in the back there. And uh, so we just welcome everybody. We're glad you're here today. I uh, want to mention a couple things for the folks that are have uh, driven in today. If you want to give, the foyer is open for you to give in. And uh, there's giving stations out in the foyer, so you can make your way around there. And there is uh, sanitizer and everything in the foyer, so you're welcome to do that. If you're watching with us online this morning, um, some... <laughs> Some folks are honking in the, you might be able to hear it in the parking lot. Um, but uh, if you're joining us online this morning, you'll see at the bottom of your screen this morning the text to give number and also um, our websites where you can go to give today. So if you want to give your tithes and offerings or anything the Lord speaks to you today, you can do that uh, right there. For our great grace folks, I want to remind you this morning that um, a couple things. Number one, if you're watching online today, share uh, the message uh, in real time. Share it and it'll be shared to your friends all around the country and the world, and so we invite you to do that, because we want to be a blessing during this time to as many as we can, all right? And so uh, that's very important. Also, for our Great Grace folks here, on Tuesday night, we are carrying on with our prayer meeting um, at 7 p.m., but it will be on the uh, GGI community page. So if you've not already liked that page, make sure you go to GGI community and you like that page, and you can join us in real time on Tuesday nights and pray with us from home. We'll have a, a small group here praying.
praying together, and then everyone at home praying at the same time. And last Tuesday was super powerful, and you could sense the presence of God in the room. And so we just invite you to do that on Tuesday, all right? And so um, a couple other things. Um, we do have our, our normal Saturday morning. Uh, comes on at 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings for our discipleship group. And so that's broadcasted also. So we invite you to be a part of all of those. We'll be back here Thursday night equally um, for our service on Thursday night. So thank you guys. Thank the worship team. Powerful worship this morning. Really amazing. And uh, we thank all the people joining us in the parking lot today. We're glad you're here this morning. And so we're going to get right into the word of the Lord today. And let me tell you, with what Dennis has already shared with me, we've got something special. And uh, I know he's going to uh, bring what God's given him. So we just invite you just to open the word and get ready this morning. So let's open our spirit. So thank you, worship team. As they come down, Dennis is going to come up. Yes, thank you, worship team. For those that you were watching, for those in the parking lot, it is great to still carry the presence of God. I, I walked in here this morning to pray, and you could look at what seems to be an empty church, which means empty seats. But it sure wasn't an empty church, because the Holy Spirit was so in the building this morning. You know, it's funny, in San Antonio, they've got this uh, saying out there, and this is what it says, no close encounters of any kind. Well, I'm sorry, San Antonio, but you, you think you're talking to men. But this morning I had a close encounter with the Lord. And uh, he didn't seem to feel he couldn't get close to me. And it was quite precious. Um, I want to pray, first of all, that we pray for our, our friends in the churches. We pray for you listening. We pray across the world. We must start with prayer. Father, we thank you so much that you care, and Lord, that you are with us in the storm, and Lord, that you are able to lead us, as we spoke last week, that you will send your word in the midst of everything. But right now, we pray for other churches. We pray for Jim De Palma. We pray for Paul Doherty. We pray for our friends in Europe. We pray for our friends in America. Lord, that you will just have your way and that you will glorify your name in the midst of these folks. I pray healing would be released in a supernatural way across the nations. I ask, Lord, that according to 2 Corinthians 1, it's the prayers of the saints that count. So we ask, Lord, that healing will just be released across the nations. If any, anyone has caught this virus, Lord, that's any of yours, I pray the hand of God as you spoke to us, Lord, that you would, you would touch people, that you would lay on people, you, you would release angels of healing into the church. And we thank you for it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I want to start by sharing with you something that's very important. I shared it yesterday, but I must share it again because I've had a little insight, and then I'll tell you what happened today. Um, two nights ago, I had a dream, and in the dream, I was being transported into uh, a, a hilly country in Europe. And that hilly country, I administered actually in that country multiple times. And uh, in the dream, it, something was trying to redirect us. And we were finding ourselves not being able to find the place we were supposed to minister in because something of a wind was redirecting us every time we, we got there. Eventually, we found someone in the middle of this country to find out where it was what we were to preach. And they said, oh, you're him, are you? I've heard about you. You're banned from preaching in this country. And it wasn't a person speaking for the government of the country. It was a person speaking for the church. And as I said, I said, what do you mean I'm banned? I've ministered in this country multiple times. I said, no, you are banned. And as they're talking to me, suddenly a woman's face appears next to me or before me. And she has, uh, she has long hair. And uh, it doesn't matter really what she looks like. But it was her that had released this word against me. And as a result, the churches had banned me. As I came out of the dream, but, well, in the dream, I listened to it, and I said, well, that's not going to make any difference. I'm still finding that place. But you're banned. No, I'm not banned. I'm finding that place. And I knew what it was. In that country, a Jezebel spirit had tried to silence the prophetic. And uh, what's happening now in the midst of the church is something is trying to silence the prophetic. Well, I want to say this to you. We will not be silenced. 
Because right now is when we need to hear God. So this is what happened um, last night. I, I became troubled of spirit. And uh, I thought, okay, is this me? Is this my walk? But no, it was something deep troubling me. It tells you in Galatians 4, 5 that the spirit literally wrestles within us to gain that which is his. And as he began to wrestle, I, I, I began to pray and, and then wake, woke up in the middle of the night. And, and I, I'm always an early riser. And I was saying, Holy Spirit, it, it's the prophetic we need right now. We need the word of the Lord. We need to know what you're doing. We need to know what you're saying. And as I'm praying this, I feel like a spirit of intercession and prayer comes on me. And so I come down early to the church and I come into the church and I'm praying and praying and praying when suddenly like a revelation, you know how you pray in Ephesians 1.17 for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. You remember that scripture? Well, the Holy Spirit suddenly opens up revelation to me and, and opens up. And if I weep, there's nothing I can do about it because you can't meet God and not weep. And, and uh, he just opens up and he begins to speak to me. And as he begins to speak to me, I found myself crying, just literally what Sasha was singing. I must know you. I must pursue Holy Spirit. It's all right you telling me these things, but I got to know you more. I got to know you. And, and suddenly this weeping comes upon me as the, as the Spirit of God begins to come upon me. And I realized that he was beginning to minister to me uh, prophetically about what he's doing in the church right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quote to you the scripture that he quoted to me, and there's going to be a lot more to it, and I want you to listen intently. And it says this in Romans 13, 11, and do this. This is not a suggestion. This isn't a request. This is a command. And do this. Understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit began to download to me the hour that we're in. Now, do this, understanding the present time. It's time for a wake-up. In fact, the Lord is going to release, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, a two-fold wake-up. He's going to wake up the church... And he's going to wake up the world, which I'm going to show to you in a moment. And this wake-up call is huge. You see, this is what's even worrying me about this hour right now. Some people can't even be bothered to get in a car, which is quite legal, quite safe, and even drive. They've got into that, well, I'll just watch it online. Well, that's what people have been doing for years. Oh, I'll just watch it online. They've become slumbering in their spirit. They want it easy. I'm, I'm going to warn you, the Lord's about to release a wake-up. He said, it's time for a wake-up call to come in the church. In the middle of when a pandemic is around, the church doesn't need to be going to sleep. In fact, in the middle of a pandemic running around, it is the moment of the Lord to say, now, wake up. Now, let me just talk about understanding the time. You see, a lot of the church, and, and this is not uh, critical, but a lot of the church is caught between two events. It's caught between the event of when it got saved. So everybody's looking back at their salvation. So it's a backward-looking church. Then the, the other part of the church is always looking forward to what they call the rapture or the second coming, etc. So you've got half the church looking for this event and half the church looking back at an event. But no one understands the hour in which they live. And the reason for the prophetic, the prophetic is not just to soothsay you and make you feel good, but the prophetic's real call is to waken you up and to tell you what is going on. That's the reason for it. Now do this. Understand the present time. The Lord spoke to me about the present time. There is about to be and an, an already is stirring on the winds of the Spirit an awakening. But the first awakening that is needed is the awakening of the church. You see, if the church doesn't wake up, what's the point of God waking up the world? If the church isn't ready, then it's like parents, you know, never preparing for a child that they, they, they've wanted to have. And there's nothing there. They've not got anything. They've not got a crib. They've not got a, any diapers. They've got nothing. They're not prepared. But the church is saying, move, Lord, move, Lord. But the Lord's saying, but the church isn't awake. 
if Paul is talking to the New Testament church about being asleep, just after the greatest outpouring known to man, how much more would the church be asleep today? So it tells us in literally Romans 11.8, it says in, in the King James, it said literally a slumbering spirit has been released upon them, which means they slumber and they can't wake up and they can't see. In reference, it's talking obviously about people knowing the law, but a slumbering spirit means they can't see, they can't understand, they're sleeping. And, and it's come on the church. The church is all about size, numbers, entertainment, how many people we get, what money we get, not understanding what's going on. He actually says in Isaiah 56 and verse 10, he said, the watchmen or the prophets are slumbering. They're slumbering. They're, they're caught up. And that's why a lot of them, are, if, I, if you don't mind me saying this, are cheating. They're picking up words from others and pretending they're words from God. They're running onto certain lists and saying, that's what God said, I'll say that. And they're not taking time out to spend time intimately with God. Then it tells us in, in Nahum 3 and verse 18, it says this, and then the shepherds are slumbering, which means they they become complacent in what they do. We all say we serve God, and I believe that everybody's intention is to serve God. But if you're not listening to what the Spirit is now saying, then you're not actually really serving God. You're serving yourself. How many, first question I always get asked when I meet other pastors, how many have you got? What a ridiculous, pathetic question. It's a carnal question. It's a question about, have you got as many as me? I tell you the only one that's got anyone is Jesus. They're his sheep, but we've become so caught up in, in, and we're fast asleep, caught up in the spirit of the age. We're entertaining. We're using the same copies as the age is uh, the spirit of the age is using, and we're not alive to what is actually happening in God. Then it says in the same scripture, but your noblemen, they love to lay down. In other words, instead of the elders being the ones taking hold of God on behalf of the people, they, they find it easier to relax. And instead of the, the five-fold ministry, the noblemen of the church, understanding what the noblemen are really about, I think it's, in the, it, 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 it's uh, Nehemiah 3.7. It says, the noblemen of Tekoa will not put their necks into the work. You know, they were relaxing in what they had done instead of leading the people. The people right now are in need of leading. So there's a slumbering spirit got on the church. And, and we think, yeah, numbers are everything. No, numbers aren't everything. God's presence and, and people's knowing the kingdom is everything. What's everything? This is what the Lord told us to pray. Your kingdom come, not according to me, but according to you. Seek first the kingdom, not my kingdom, your kingdom. In other words, the church needs to wake up. I know that people will be getting mad at me. I don't care. I didn't get called into the prophetic ministry to be upset if people don't agree. I'm just telling you what the Lord told me. So an awakening is being released on the church. Pr prophets hear the word of the Lord. It's time for the prophets to shout to the church, wake up. There's an awakening coming. Church, wake up. Here's the word of the Lord. Wake up. Prophesy. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. When I, was, uh, when I was in the military many, many years ago, we had this massive sergeant, and he had a, a tattoo right across his whole back, which was an eagle. And his job was to wake up the people in the billet, and there, you know, there was about 13 in each one. And he would come and open the door, and he would stand, and I'll try and move, move the microphone away, and his job was to, to, to shout to wake us up. And, you know, it wasn't 7 o'clock like some of you believe wake-up time is. It was a little bit earlier, all right? And so he, he, he suddenly stands in the doorway, fills the doorway because he was so big, and shouts, wake up! And then he walked up and he went, went round all the other billets and he woke them up. When he came back in, he would look to see who was awake. If he saw some that weren't awake... Oh, no, he wouldn't stand at the door anymore, which is what the Spirit of God has been doing, standing at the door. 
And so he walks through into the and stands next to the bed. And he addresses the person personally. And I believe that sometimes it's like, you know, the letter to the church is you have a name that you're alive, but you're really not alive. So I'm, I'm saying to you, wake up. That actually says that, those words, wake up. And so he gets at the end of the bed and he shouts, wake up! Now everybody else is awake and they're thinking, oh man, please wake up. Trouble is coming your way. He walks away, he checks everybody else, he comes back. If the person isn't woken up, he goes to the end of the bed and turns the bed over with the person in the bed. Look out, church. Some of the beds are going to get turned over. (laughs) It's time for the church to wake up because there's a second part to what the Lord wants to do. I uh, began to feel by the Spirit a word of the Lord coming, and it would not leave me alone. And, uh, and it kept saying, and a spirit of grace and supplication. He kept saying it to me, a spirit of grace and supplication. Now, that's found in Zechariah 12 and verse 10, and it spe- says this in context, and a spirit of grace and supplication will come upon Jerusalem, and they will look upon him whom they pierced. Now, this is the second part of the awakening. The spirit of grace and supplication is the spirit by which the Holy Spirit suddenly puts on unsaved people. His grace begins to touch them, and they find themselves praying, and the Lord leads them to the one on the cross. So watch what the Lord is saying. In the midst of all this, watch for a huge awakening. First of all, church, and if church, if you don't listen and you carry on with your games, the Lord will send an awakening, but it will not be for you. First of all, waking up the church, and then secondly, the awakening hitting the world where a spirit of grace is going to be dropped upon the world, and the spirit of grace is going to be able to touch people to literally start to pray who can't pray, and supplication will come upon them, and people will find themselves praying for unsaved people, and people will find themselves praying for their unsaved family members, just like the 1858 revival that happened in America, where people would pray as a church for someone as they're praying the spirit of God would hit them miles away and this same spirit of supplication and grace is now beginning to come now I'm going to share this again in a moment but I'm going to share a vision to you now in a moment I'm going to tell you that the last thing that God has told me but I'm dropping it in right now watch this I started it with a dream now the Lord gave me a vision And I wasn't asking for it. I suddenly had it. Now, I live in the United States of America, so everything's relative to every other nation. In the dream, I suddenly saw a wave. Not a high wave, but a low wave. And a low wave, and and the water was probably no deeper than this, but it was clear. And in the dream, the wave began to roll across America. As I watched the wave roll across America, I looked at its source, and I couldn't see anything driving. It wasn't wasn't a tsunami. It wasn't a tidal wave. The wave just kept rolling across America. It was about this high, and, and it literally rolled across the whole land. And when I say America, I'm sure it was Canada and further, but this is what I saw. It was clear water. It wasn't muddy water. It was the clear water of the Spirit. And the wave was literally being driven by God. It wasn't high. It was touching people everywhere. It was touching every state. It was touching every town. It was touching every hamlet. Because the Lord says, I'm about to sweep across the land. It would remind you of what you would call the Welsh revival, where it wasn't all about uh, highfalutin people, even though God releases great preachers in the midst of revival. It was going to be a people revival. It was a wave that was coming and touching everybody. Watch that. A spirit of grace and supplication coming upon the land and coming upon the lands. I want to tell you, there's something about Italy right now. 
It's not that just Italy is having a rough time. There is a move of God, planned by God, for Italy that is absolutely amazing, and it's going to sweep that land again. And I'm going to say this so carefully. It's going to go into the Vatican. It's going to go into the, to the places where the politicians are. It's going to sweep into the hospitals. Italy is going to find itself praying like it's never prayed. Uh, lands like Spain that have had visitations, lands like the UK that have had visitations, lands like France that have had visitation, and they've affected the world. The Lord says, <laughs> the Lord says, I have not forgotten anything. I have not forgotten the blood of the martyrs. I have not forgotten the prayers of the saints, and I have not forgotten those who gave their lives up. And their blood is crying out. And their sacrifices are crying out to me. That's just the, the awakening. At the beginning of the year, the Holy Spirit, and this is, gets really strong. This is where I had my visitation. At the beginning of the year, the, begin, the Lord began to talk to me about the year. And he, and he revealed several things to me. And I didn't realize how he was going to do what it is he's doing. So the next thing the Lord said to me, I told you that this would be the year, Isaiah 66, 14, when the hand of the Lord would be made known to his servants. Now, just before I explain all of this, do you know of some of the miracles that have been happening? Do you know that some of God's servants have had him physically lay on them and raise them? Do you know that he's touched people? Do you know about the angels that have touched people? But this is in particular, now listen carefully. The Lord said it would be in three ways that the hand of the Lord would be made known. Number one, isn't it interesting? God awakens the church, God sends an awakening, but it comes because the servants of God experience the hand of the Lord. Isaiah 53 says, to whom? Has the arm of the Lord been revealed? You see, Jesus was actually touched with the hand of God and carrying the hand of God. And folks, the hand of God is none other than the Holy Spirit. And he's saying again, right now, you didn't know what I was telling you, son. Now I'm telling you. The hand of the Lord is going to be made known to his servants, those who have yielded their lives to serve the living God. In whatever walk, whatever denomination you are in, the Lord says the hand of the Lord. Now, let me add a little bit to it because I'm prophesying. The Lord says, you think I've moved among the Muslims. You've seen nothing. Because there are some who think they're serving me and I will reveal my hand to them and they will know me. But the hand of the Lord is going to be made known in an intimate way to the servants. I'm going to just give an honor to someone, if that's okay, in this prophecy. When I was a young man, I, I got saved in a Pentecostal church, and I heard a lot of things about the Holy Spirit, and, and really did. And, 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 and it wasn't long, probably a year or so, when I found out about this woman. I was saved in 1973. And I found out about this woman, Catherine Coleman. And I was so fascinated, I would read her books and I would cry and cry and cry. I couldn't tell if I was crying about the miracles or crying about the Holy Spirit. I didn't know, I was just crying. And, and she wasn't like today. You know, today you, you can't get hold of anybody because they've just got too big. Take note of that. I wrote Catherine Coleman, a young convert. And I wrote to her and she wrote me back and hand signed it. Think about that versus today. Several years later, Benny Hinn walks into Britain. Probably, I'm trying to guess at the time, he was Roy Harden's son-in-law. He walks in to Britain. He has a miracle service, etc. And I suppose it would be, um, gosh, I would say 1984. And then he meets the pastors. And as he meets the pastors, he starts talking about this intimate encounter with the Holy Spirit. Something shook the daylights out of me. 
And I realize he knew the Holy Spirit like I didn't. At that moment I prayed. I, I, I can't explain to you I don't have time. But the encounters with the Holy Spirit that I have had as a result of hearing someone had, as a result of seeing what someone else had, because that's how God does it. And let me tell you when I'm prophesying, the hand of the Lord will be made known. The word known is the word that is used for intimate encounter. It's the same word used for a man and woman coming together. And it literally means the hand of the Lord will be made known in an intimate way to the servants of God. So watch this. God's sending an awakening. God is sending an awakening. But he's now saying, I'm going to reveal my hand to my servants. So in the first way that you will have an encounter will be there will be an intimate encounter with the Holy Spirit in ways you have never known. Some of the things that the early church knew, you will know. Some of the, the breath and the sweetness. I love the song of Solomon. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for your love is more delightful than wine. In other words, I, let me touch that, that intimate side of you. Pleasing of the fragrances of your anointings. Your name, your name, your name is like anointing poured out. Oh, take me away with you. Let the king bring me into his chambers. What is it saying? An intimate encounter. This is for servants. This is not just for the, the apostles and prophets. And It's for servants. All right? Every servant. I don't care if you're a servant on the doorkeeper of the house of the Lord. I don't care if you're a servant in the business arena. I don't care if you're a servant on the platform. Every servant is going to encounter the Lord. All right? The second thing is that the Lord says the second part of this encounter would not just be the intimacy of the one, but would be to actually understand the anointing of him. And so the second realm that the servants would walk in is that they would actually be touched by the anointing. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. In other words, an anointing will begin to touch your life, to be smeared through this encounter into your life where you will carry an anointing into marketplace. You will carry, because this thing won't last forever, but in the midst of this that is going on, the Lord says right now, this is the birthing place right now that's why you shouldn't be lazy guys this is a moment and 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 right now he's saying out of this intimate encounter the holy spirit will begin to start to anoint people to carry this encounter with them wherever they go the third part of this being made known is quite shocking out of this as you begin to minister to people who will be desperate because of the spirit of supplication and grace that's come on them, you will see his glory touch people. It, this is what the Lord told me to tell you it's like. It was like Smith Wigglesworth. When Smith Wigglesworth, he used to go to all these healing meetings and he would bring people to get healed in these healing meetings. And then the guys running the healing meetings said to each other, you know that Smith could do this. He just doesn't believe he can. And so one day, as Smith turned up to the healing meeting, he found out that the guys couldn't come. And they said, you've got to do it. He said, I can't do it. It's you that's got the gift. He said, no, you've got to do it, Smith. And Smith was petrified. And he said, when the first person came up to be prayed for and he laid his hands on them, he said, the shock wave that went into the atmosphere, he said, because the person got healed and was shocked because the normal guys weren't there. And he said, and Smith was shocked that God had used him. Same as Reinhard Bonnke. Remember, as an evangelist, the other evangelist was told by God to go home. And, and Reinhardt's left with the meeting and doesn't know what to do. And as he gets up and begins to speak, the Holy Spirit says, my words in your mouth are as powerful as my words in my mouth. It's got nothing to do with the, the vessel. It's got to do with the word. And folks, you've got to understand that when you become intimate with the Holy Spirit that like you're going to, he will use the vessel. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's not about the vessel. 
So these are three things that the Lord's told me are beginning to happen right now. If some of you are being stirred by the Spirit of God and you can't understand what's going on, the Spirit of God is stirring you up for this. Some of you, and I'm not being unkind, will find out when all of this is over, you won't be able to go to the church you were going to. But some of you pastors might even find you have to resign the churches you're in. Because you, you can no longer play this game. But you have to be where the Holy Spirit is. This great move is, 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 is literally birthing right now. Now another thing the Lord showed me was that the dreams and visions that we have had that we have not yet seen. For instance, my daughter Sasha that led the, um, led the worship just then, um, I remember a prophecy where she came out of a dream or a vision or something, and, and she literally saw me sitting at, at, a, at a table with one of the spiritual sons. And as she saw me sitting there, she said, there was a bottle of wine sitting there, and you were sharing the wine, of course. And all the people that want, want to go carnal, here we go, see, it had nothing to do with natural wine. It had to do with something else. She said, and I looked at the number on the bottle, and it was 1948. And she said, you were sharing the wine with one of your sons. I don't know if you know anything about wine or anything about moves of God. But in 1948 is a recognized move of God coming out of 1947. And 1948 was when God moved and the Latter-day Movement started and the Hebride Revival started and all these things started. And I just found myself once again praying back that old dream today. And I said, oh, Holy Spirit, I've known you. You've touched me. But I want this 1948 pouring on my life right now. And this is what the Lord said to me today. He said, this is the season where the dreams and the visions that you've had, all right, are going to actually be brought back to you to pray over because this is the season that they have got you waiting for. So I'm going to give you another vision. In this vision, I'm standing in a meeting. It happens several times. And I'm standing in a meeting, and suddenly as I'm standing in the meeting, I see the river. And the river is running through the meeting. And I see the banks of the river. And as I see the banks of the river, as I'm watching, suddenly the water mounts up. You know, like just when they, they crossed the Jordan, you know how the water mounted up? It's suddenly the water mounted up. And as the water mounted up, it began to come pouring down this river. And as it came pouring down this river, the banks of the river began to collapse. And I knew that the Lord was saying a season would come when the Holy Spirit's movement would break the banks of where the church had set what God could do. And so th this move would come and break the banks. Now in Micah 2 and verse 12 and 13, it talks about a season coming. And in this season it says, And one who breaks open the way will go before them. In other words, God moving will break open the way. So whatever has been clamped down by men, whatever has been shut down by demonic forces, whatever the gates of hell have tried to hold, all right, it says one who breaks open the way will go before them. And so he comes sweeping in and he breaks away everything that hinders the church from going on. And then it says, and those who break open the way will follow him. They break through the gate. In other words, as, as the Spirit of God begins to sweep, he takes the banks, he, he takes the, the realm in which the church has been able to, and he, and he breaks it open. And then he looks for others that will come and follow him. Those who break open the way. Now, what's really interesting is if you actually know the verse before, it says, the Lord says... I will go out and I will get me a remnant. And I will bring the remnant and the flocks will flock again. 
Now, a remnant of those who don't care about being successful to men, they don't care about the carnality of the game, they care about their intimate relationship with God. He says, listen, I'll break open the way, I'll knock the banks down, and as I knock the banks down, I'm looking for a remnant who understand, and they will break open their own gates. It could be a denominational gate, it could be an experiential gate, it could be a carnal gate, they'll break open their own gates and they will come with me. Now in the vision I had, this happened very, very suddenly. It just happened suddenly. I'm standing, I'm in the church. Our church isn't exactly the deadest church in the world. In other words, the Holy Spirit is allowed to move, but even us are limited in our experience. But as I'm watching, this water mounts up. It, 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 it wasn't a tsunami, it was more like a tidal wave. It just suddenly rose up. It came down the same channels, but it took the sides of the channel out. Now watch this, because I've had a lot of dreams and visions. This is the season where dreams and visions that you have had will be brought back to the surface. I find myself standing in a church once. This is linked to this. I found myself looking up, and as I'm looking up in this vision, I see the top of a mountain, and I'm at the bottom of the mountain, and then I see like a sluice gate at the top of the mountain, and then I see channels, concrete channels with walls coming down the mountain. As I look up, the sluice gates are opened, and, and literally the water pours down these channels and starts to flow. In the vision, I'm saying to God, boy, I wish I could be part of that, but I'm just watching it. You see, what men had done, they had literally put their own avenues in which the Spirit could flow. You see, they loved that scripture. Everything should be done decently and in order. Whose order? Mainly men's. Not God's order. God's order is like the New Testament church. God's order is like when God breaks out. I see that vision and I say that, but then I see the vision again two years later. This time, I've had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I see the same vision. This time, instead of standing at the bottom on the outside of the wall watching it, I'm standing at the bottom, at the bottom, and I'm in it, literally in the concrete pathway. The same sluice gate opens up and the same water starts to come. This time, I'm right there. This water literally, physically bowled me over. I'm talking about, I'm standing there watching a vision and the next minute, the water hits me. Nobody else can see it but me. What happened? God took me from being a watcher to being a participator. You catch that? That's just a vision. But whoa, what a vision. I'm not just watching what God's up to. I'm now stepping into what God's up to. See, these visions are important. See, God is now looking to touch some people beyond men's arenas. You don't know this, guys, unless you traveled a lot and met a lot of people. There are some people who have experienced God like you never did. And you're all reading Smith Wigglesworth's book and all those books. These people walking it today, they have encountered it. God always has a remnant. And what he's looking for is not only servants, but remnants. People that are prepared to be a remnant above just normal servanthood, who are prepared to be the life changers, who are prepared to let the water not only come and break it open, but be the ones who break it open with the water. So in other words, unless you have this sweep over you, how can you be used by it to sweep? Oh, come on. Be careful when you're prophetic that you don't say more than you should or, or have any wrong spirit. One of, the, one of the greatest gifts that a prophet must have is mercy and grace. But I want to tell you, that we are in a moment of life change in the church of Jesus Christ. You see, we're all talking about the pandemic. Of course we are. 
We're all talking about what's happening. But how many people are talking about what God is doing? Now do this. Wake up from your sleep knowing the present time. As I was in here praying this morning for some of the older brothers and sisters who might be watching, I began to pray out and I said, Lord, when you brought me here all those years ago, I joined a group that was literally, I didn't know I joined them, but I joined a group that was a front runner group. And, and people were sweeping in from everywhere and then due to some things that happened, I found myself on the outs and the group changed, it changed. And the Lord left me here in San Antonio, not wanting to be here in San Antonio. And he kept telling me something is going to happen. And then suddenly the prophetic spirit began to tell me, you are like Caleb. Now how many of you know that Caleb was part of a group where it was happening? Caleb was part of a group that was supposed to walk into the land and conquer the land. But instead of that happening, Caleb found himself back in the desert on the Alps. And yet there was a season came when Caleb suddenly, at 85 years of age, found himself walking into the vision, listen to me, the vision and the dream that he'd had all those years ago. And the Lord said to me this morning as I was walking around praying, listen, this is your Caleb moment. This is the, the season where the hidden will become known. Hidden in God, listen to the words, hidden in God, hidden from men. But what is hidden in God is always exposed when the hand of God opens. And I realize that God has got many of you that you've been held. Some of you have retired. I could even prophesy some of your names. You've retired. The Lord says, you're not staying retired. You think you've retired, but the Lord says, you're not staying retired. For the Lord is about to stir you back up. And you, some of you retired say, my God, I never fulfilled. And the Lord says, I never fulfilled. And I'm going to stir some of you back up. I'm going to shock you. The country that I had the dream about, some of you that are watching from UK, was Wales. Wales, the land of revival has fought to get back. A Jezebel spirit has come against Wales to try to stop God moving. I'm going to prophesy to you, Wales. God is going to move again in you, O Wales. And God is going to sweep again in you, O Wales. You watch what he's up to. Some of you know it, but some of you are going to be restored back into the ministry to fulfill it. This is a powerful hour. Some of you, like Paul Doherty, did I just say your name yesterday? Some of you are not in retirement, my brother. Some of you are about to be restored, my brother, because you are going to see the miraculous, powerful hand of God moving through your ministry again. Some of you that have been hidden in corners won't stay there. Because the Lord says, the Caleb moment is coming. I am just as strong as I was on the day I heard it. I am just as vigorous for the Lord, as he said, has kept me. Now give me, now give me my mountain. The move of God that is sweeping will not only bring backsliders back, but the move of God that is sweeping will sweep a generation right now, a generation into God. And there's a lot of grandfathers and grandmothers that they will need. It's absolutely imperative that you hear this. I don't know all that the Lord will say in the next few weeks prophetically, but what I do know is he said this. It's time to know. It's time to wake up. It's time for us servants to reach in. The Holy Spirit wants fellowship. The Holy Spirit wants it. Listen to that. The Holy Spirit wants it. It's time for us to stir up the old dreams and visions. It's time for us to stir up 
all that we've been praised. Time to pull out the prophecies. It's time to dust them off. And this is what I found myself doing this morning. And this is how I'm going to bring this to a head. I found myself praying what God had said, praying what God was saying, praying what he had told me, and it was stirring up in me as the Spirit of God said, come on, I'm blowing, I'm blowing that off. You see, it says in Isaiah 48.3, it said, long ago I spoke, but suddenly I will bring it to pass. Long ago I said it, but suddenly I'll bring it to pass. In other words, I did say this to you, and you've had to wait a long time, but let me blow the dust off that. Come on right now is a moment. So church, we need to wake up. I know some people will throw this away, but the people who will hear it will hear it. I know that those that have any what the Spirit's saying will hear what the Spirit's saying. I won't be the only one hearing it because when God releases his word, the prophets hear it. But folks, it's a season. I believe that we must reach in. Have you noticed that after every meeting we pray? I thank for those that, that, that are sharing. I thank for those. That, and please, if you're hearing God, share it. doesn't matter what people say. Just go for the ones that have an ear to hear. It doesn't matter what people say. It matters what God says. And it matters what we do. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. Come on, some of you lazy ones. Get back up. Wake back up, some of you noblemen. I prophesy to some of you retirees. I speak to your health that you will be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak restoration to you broken down bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, wake back up. Come on, it's time to invite the hand of God into an encounter. Lord, we just want to do this as we close this out. We want to yield ourselves. I want to yield our fellowship. I want you to yield your fellowships. Some of you know you can't walk with who you're walking with anymore. If you do, you'll miss it. It's not about how great you look. It's about how great he looks. It's not about what you think you can do. It's about what he wants to do through you. I prophesy to your dreams. I prophesy to your visions. I stir them back up. Things that you've forgotten. Visitations that you thought were years ago are still hanging on you right now. They're hanging on you like a garment that's about to be placed on you. It's a season in the church. Kapapa. Let's raise our hands. Come on, can you join me just in a moment? If you're in a car and you want to get down and kneel beside it, that's okay with me. You want to raise your hands where you are, that's okay with me. You want to fall down on your living room floor, that's okay. The Lord would say these words to you. In the song, you have said this, I will pursue you. But now the Lord will actually tell you what's been going on. You think you pursued me? No, I pursued you. And I have been pursuing you to stir you, to turn you, so that you would pursue me. For like the lion of the tribe of Judah, I have come for my prey. And my prey is not to destroy it, but my, pr my prey is to literally turn it and encounter it and let it know the same roar. Sash, could we actually sing that one song? You know that one song that sings, Spirit Move Me? You know that song? And maybe you want to add just to it for a second, Spirit Move Me, Spirit Touch Me, Spirit Fill Me, Spirit Speak Through Me.
Just as the trees are moved by the wind, so I am moved by the spirit as you blow. Held by the wings of love, lock is ready. Just keep playing worship team right now uh, in your vehicles out there in the parking lot. Those at home right now, you just begin to write where you are. I know you've already done it, but just say, Lord, I receive that word. There is such a tangible anointing in the room right now that we're experiencing. And uh, we're, we're actually getting ready to walk out of the parking lot and begin to pray for the cars that are in the parking lot. We're going to anoint the cars. We're going to lay hands on them. Pray for the families that are in the cars. But right now at home, we just say experience the word of the Lord. Experience the tangible presence of God right where you're at. May it pierce your heart. May it touch you in the depth of who you are right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you today, Lord. We bless you today. We bless you today, Lord. 
Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So um, we're, we're actually going to end the broadcast here in a moment, but we're going to minister to the people that are in the parking lot that came this morning. But we bless you at home today. Thank you for joining us. As Dennis said, make sure that you share the broadcast so that it can actually touch more people, uh, friends maybe that we're not friends with. But we bless you today. We pray God's best. We'll be back here Tuesday night at 7 p.m. It'll be on the GGI community page if you want to join us for prayer that night. So we invite you to do that. Bless you guys today. Thank you all for joining us.